conversation to do with the magic of crop circles. Okay, so I'm going to go through this at speed because there's a lot of information that I could tell you. Uh, about, I could talk for about three hours on this subject. There's just so much uh, I could fill you in on. A lot of it is in the public domain, but a lot of it isn't widely known. So I'm going to come, cover a lot of it, a lot of different topics in a short space of time. But what I'm trying to do is focus on the, the most important points. Okay, and I'm trying to answer a few questions that, uh, about the whole subject of crop circles. But, um, and as you see from, from the, the, the picture here, it's not just about crop circles. This whole subject is a much wider field than people think it is. Crop circles, what's, what springs to mind? When you think about crop circles, what sort of words would you say when you think about the crop circles? Come on in. Pranks. Pranks. Pranks for me, yeah? Pranks. Students and okay. fields of sticks at night and Okay, all right, we'll, we'll get on to that, yeah. that kind of thing. But um, there's a lot of positive words that will come out when people think about crop circles. There's a couple of them there. Beauty, history, magic. Intrigue, genius, sacred geometry, wonderment, healing, temporary temples, people refer to them as spiritual, mind blowing, peace, and enlightenment. Those are a lot of the things that why people are attracted to them in the first place. Okay, but just want to follow along with that. To make no mistakes, enlightenment is a destructive process. It is the crumbling away of untruths. It is seeing through the facade of pretense. It is the complete eradication of everything we imagine to be true. So there's another side to enlightenment as well. It's not just about the light and the love and all the nice things. Okay, we have to sometimes confront the things that we don't want to face. And there is a lot of dark things around the subject of crop circles as well, which a lot of people aren't necessarily familiar with. And I have come to the conclusion now that crop circles, the whole subject, is really holding up a mirror to the human race. It's showing us the good in the fantastic things that we're capable of, the beauty, the harmony, the, the spiritual things, you know, all the wonderful things that we talked about on that first slide. But it's also saying, yes, but you've got to address these points as well. We've got all this anger, we've got all this bitterness and you know, rivalry and um, well, some, some of it is, uh, is, is very disturbing, you know, what's going on around it. And that's the bit that the public don't get to see. Uh, but my line on this has always been to follow the truth, the path of truth. And I always think, well, whatever it uncovers, that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to just keep searching and so keep digging on this. And sometimes it uncovers things you don't want to uncover or didn't expect it to uncover. So it's, it's a double-edged sword really. Um, but if you want the truth, if you want to find enlightenment or move towards enlightenment, you have to look at all of this. You can't just take the nice bits. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm really interested in now is looking at this <coughs> unifying consciousness behind the crop circle mystery. There is, from what I can see, there is something that goes on around the whole subject. Not obviously Okay, and if you look at it in terms of a whodunit mystery, who's made these crop circles and how has it been done, you're never going to get to the answer. It's a, there's a lot more to it than that. Now I've discovered, I've been putting all this together and it's really sort of fallen into place really about in the last week or so, but there are key strands that all make up this, this whole mystery. Spirit energy is one of the key components of this. Earth energy is another key component. And the third one is human energy. Without though, any one of those three, the mystery would not be what it is. But with those three in place, it produces 
a new form of energy, a creative form of energy. And I'm going to go through all these, these energy forms with you and show you how that all fits in as I go through this talk today. Now, this is a quote from Colin Andrews, who's one of the most experienced crop circle researchers that there is. More than a paradigm shift, human consciousness is engaged in the process of integration with a higher mind. The process is occurring through encounters with non-ordinary reality that are known as high strangeness events. Okay, and we're going to discuss some of those as well, but uh, as you see that there is a, a consciousness engaged here. There is an interaction going on. And, and this is producing some incredible results. And we, if we look at it with an open mind, we don't close our minds off to any other possibilities, something truly astounding will emerge. Now, I came across this through reading Colin Andrews' book recently, On the Edge of Reality, which is a, is a superb book, which covers a crop circle subject, but it also covers wider phenomena. Because what Colin found when he started researching crop circles, it leads to other things. It's not just about finding out who's behind this and what's behind it. It leads you down other paths, and that's what I've found as well. And he wrote about this experiment called the Skull Experiment, which was um, a psychic experiment, apparently initiated by the spirits themselves through an established psychic circle in Norfolk. And they also got many top scientists to sit in on it, to monitor what was going on and to verify that they weren't making things up and uh, pulling the wool over people's eyes. So they achieved some incredible results with this. Objects materialised out of thin air, uh, objects disappeared into thin air, physical contact was made with hands and fingers, things like that. And they recorded sounds, so there's been a lot of, a lot of very good results they had from this. And it went on over a five year period. It's probably about the best documented evidence that there is for some kind of spirit existence beyond death. When the mediums asked the spirits, what is the ingredients for making this work? They replied, there's a communication that works through a combination of spirit human and earth energy, which combines to form a new creative energy. And its effectiveness even depended on the specific uh, combined energies of the people participating in that. <coughs> when I read that, my mind immediately went to crop circles. And I was thinking, yes, that's exactly what happens in the crop circle world. And that will become clear as we go on. And obviously that same thought occurred to Colin Andrews because he started to talk about that in relation to crop circles immediately after that. Um, so we're definitely in sync in terms of our, uh, our understanding of that. This is what one of the, the messages that was channeled through these spirits said. These energies were understood and used by the ancients, but this is now forgotten knowledge and we are trying to help <coughs> humanity to remember. Okay, so again, all this will become relevant as we go through, but it's a key component. There is a spirit element to the crop circle mystery. So I'm going to just look at that now. Now, one of those elements is balls of light. Now, balls of light have often been associated with crop circles, but no conclusive proof has ever been seen that they are, in fact, making the crop circles. There's been one or two videos doing the rounds and it's amazing what you can do with computer technology. But balls of light do interact with this whole subject. They're commonly seen around crop circles. They often are captured in photographs and um, many people have videoed them. Uh, I've got some on my other videos on YouTube. You'll see some video clips of balls of light travelling in daytime over crop circles. This, this picture here was taken by a friend of mine, Andrew Perker, who uh, is a crop circle researcher. He set his camera up and just was taking random shots with, uh, you know, like on a night setting. Uh, this, this was there, we were doing a night watch on West Kennet Longbarrow, and 
there was a crop circle just alongside it, so we went, we had wandered into the crop circle and had a look at that as it got dark. And um, this was captured on film there, which is a remarkable picture. It shows a central ball of light with a few smaller balls of light around it, and this weird thing coming out of it, which many people describe as a rod. Now, that could be insects flying at high speed, but there's no definitive evidence that suggests that that is the case. So the, my mind's still open as to what that is. Now, this is a picture that uh, was taken in Westwoods, Wiltshire, and this is a reconstructed picture by Rob Martins of a, a ball of light that I actually witnessed. So this woods is reputed to be a haunted wood, and we went in there just to see what we could see. And on two occasions, we entered the woods through, through that path along there, between the trees, and we turned back to look towards the trees, and this ball of light drifted between the trees and off. Both times at the same point, we, we arrived in the, in the woods and looked back, and it was the same orange ball of light. Amber. Almost as if that was a guardian of the woods checking us out. You know, but it was more than a coincidence that that happened exactly the same on two occasions and uh, a third occasion as well that was briefly spotted. Um, and on the same night we witnessed uh, balls of light uh, rise up from the ground. This was in a different area, in the, in the Avery Silby Hill area. We witnessed balls of light shoot up from the ground. One of them was a bright red ball, just shot up into the air, hovered around, moved around to make absolutely certain that was no car headlights or rear, rear lights, and then dropped back down to the ground again. Then about 15 minutes later, just further along the horizon, another white one shot up and did the same thing, and then dropped back down again. And then a third occasion, we saw one approaching in the distance high up in the sky coming towards us and then suddenly drop right down and shoot around in a loop on one side drop down again shoot around in the loop again on the other then drop down to the ground now we couldn't explain all that unfortunately we haven't got those on film um, it's always the case if you have cameras they're always pointing in the wrong direction there does seem to be an interaction going on and it seemed to me that those balls of light were reacting to our presence and just moments before that first red ball of light shot up, I'd been just silently meditating to see, you know, just asking for the spirits to make themselves known at that moment. And they obliged with that appearance, which was quite incredible. Now, what are they? This might shed some light on what these balls of light are. This is a, an actual event that occurred in 1994. And I met the individuals involved in this, or two of them at least, there was about eight people involved altogether that witnessed this. They were actually doing a night watch on the hill. They were looking to see if they could see anybody or making circles or any circle activity going on uh, in the area at that time. They didn't see any circles being created, but while they were there, they were approached by balls of light that came out swirled around the hill, a shroud of mist came over the whole silvery hill, these balls of light then suddenly turned into these tetrahedral craft type things with little beings inside them. Uh, and that's, I know it's hard to believe, but this, I've heard this directly from the people involved and that is exactly what's happened. And it's been documented in a number of books this and it changed their lives. It was an incredible event, and there's a lot more to the story than I've just outlined there. There was some interaction going on, there was some telepathic communication between them, and a lot of things seemed to make sense to these people when that happened. So, my theory is on this. These balls of light are not just earth lights. Maybe sometimes that could be the case, but on these, these occasions, that is not a factor. These balls of light, I, I really believe, are connected to ancient ancestors. Uh, either that or they are interdimensional beings. Now, this area around Avebury, Silbury Hill, in that Wilshire area, has a strong history, lots of 
things like Silvery Hill, Avery Stone Circle, West Kennet Long Barrow, there's lots of ancient monuments in that area that give that whole area a vibration and it's a strong connection to ancient ancestors. So we're getting close now to you know, linking to in, in the second one here, which is the earth energy. But I'll just mention a little bit more about the um, also on the, the spirit entity because these entities seem to crop up quite a lot and the, these are other ones that appeared in relation to crop circles. The top one was reported in 19, sorry, 2009 and some, a police officer was driving past Silvery Hill, the, the same area as the previous one, centre of a lot of this kind of activity, when he saw these three figures standing in a field. And he stopped his car to find out what was going on. He thought they were just doing something in the field. And he called out to them to say, what, what, what were they doing? And they turned and sprinted at extremely high speed along those tram lines that you can see on the, on the right there, and over the hill. And this is how he described them. Uh, human looking, but a little bit out of the ordinary. So the other thing that linked it to crop circles was that just over that hill there was a crop circle, which had appeared about two days before that. So many people put two and two together and said, well, that crop circle was created by them. Uh, that wasn't the case. Well, certainly there's nothing to actually de uh, determine that that was the case. But the two things, again, seem to go hand in hand. And, or was it the area? Was it the area of Silbury Hill that attracted them? We're not quite sure. And this one here, this was Andrew Perker who photographed an entity here in, inside a crop circle. He went to the, visit the crop circle very early in the morning and saw something moving around in one of the flattened areas. He thought it was just a, you know, a rabbit or something like that. And he photographed it, and, he's, and this is the close-up of it there. And that's an artist's impression of what he saw. And he was saying that this being was actually on some kind of a craft thing like that, which took off at high speed through the crop when he saw it. Um, again, an unbelievable story by the sound of it. But who's to say that that is not true? Okay? There's a lot of things we don't know about in terms of interdimensional existence. And this is where I think um, we need to start looking. And it's interesting, this one on the, on the bottom right here is an ancient artifact which has been dated to about 6,000 years, uh, which seems to depict something very similar to this, if you look. There's a lot of similarities. Now you think, well, where did they get the inspiration for that from? And is there a connection to this? And again, I'm not saying it's one thing or the other, but all I'd say to you is leave an open mind on all this kind of thing, because by closing your mind off, you're dismissing that as a, as a, as a possibility that might lead us somewhere. Okay, so I strongly believe another world does exist and it's within this one. Okay, so the entities that people are associating with crop circles I don't believe are extraterrestrial, as they're often uh, described. I believe they are from this Earth, but operating within another dimension. And there are many, many stories that uh, <coughs> discuss these kind of things. Now this is a quote from John Keel from 1970 who wrote extensively about uh, this kind of thing. And he was exploring all kinds of weird phenomena, strange phenomena, high strangeness events all over the world, way back in the 60s and 70s. And this is him. The earth is covered with windows into that unseen world. Brilliant scholars and philosophers have clearly seen the truth for centuries, but their truths were lost in the ways of organized belief. Nearly all those who have come to an understanding of the true phenomena have quietly abandoned the subject because they found it impossible to articulate their findings and make the incredible credible. 
They were rendered mute by the awesome and overwhelming realization that man is merely a trifling part of something much bigger. Okay, so he was onto that in 1970. So, and he extensively research all this kind of thing and I think if he's saying something like that there has to be some something in it because he was certainly uh, a guy to be taken seriously okay so earth energy how this all links in as well why in the world Wiltshire that there's a um, this is a connection with the with the earth of, of Wiltshire why the crop circles appear in this same place that about 90% of crop circles appear in, in the Wiltshire area, which has a strong connection with ancient history. It also has a strong connection with ley lines, energy lines, dragon lines, however you want to call them. It's a proliferation in that area, and they are all linked up with these ancient sites. So there are strong alignments and crop circles are often placed in alignment to a lot of these ancient monuments and right over some of the known uh, ley lines in the area. This was an interesting quote I found here uh, from someone called Ali Albright. Uh, it would appear that Gia expresses herself more fully when consciousness is connected. In the vibrant and responsive link between nature and the human is a conversation of vibration. So there needs to be some kind of interaction with consciousness. And in this case, it's, it's human. Okay? And then Gia, Mother Earth, expresses herself in a truer form. And this next example, coming back to the idea that um, geometry can provide its own level of consciousness when uh, put onto the land, when, when in, seen in conjunction with the earth. This is an interesting story from 1990. This was not a crop circle, but this was a design that was made by a guy called Bill Witherspoon. He did this up in the mountains in this desolate area, and it is actually 13 miles around the outside of it. And he carved it out of the land with these uh, land clouds. And he particularly chose that object because he had researched a lot about sacred geometry and thought this was a good symbol to put on the land. So the Sri Antri is the most sacred mantra or vibration or my vibrational diagram of ancient Vedic philosophy and was believed to have powerful effect on natural elements when energized by consciousness. After its completion, people reported an increased feeling of harmony and enhanced intuition in the formation and valley. The structure of the soil changed, which is remarkable. There was increased rainfall and more organic matter in the immediate area. There was increased vegetation growth, increased population of certain plants and animals. Lots of rare species of bird were seen in that area that weren't previously in that area. So something about that being put in the land on such a scale seemed to change the dynamics. And something happened energetically to create all that. So there is definitely a link with sacred geometry with crop circles. And as you see there, the previous one using a sacred geometric form create, created an energetic change. Now, crop circles have traditionally used sacred geometry as their basis because they are powerful things, powerful forms. This is a quote from Nick Marchment, who is uh, an expert in sacred geometry. The whole of creation, from the cells in your body to the outer reaches of the galaxy, is governed by the same geometric rules. Sacred geometry is within us, it's within the environment, it's in the universe everywhere, it's the building blocks of the universe. So it has energy, it has power. And as you see, there's an example of a crop circle that uses sacred geometry in it. Now, I'd like to just pose this question. Every geometric shape has its own energy and specific frequency, signature. 
So does the harmonic resonance of crop circles interact with the harmonic resonance of the Earth by introducing new frequencies to the Earth's energy grid? I certainly believe that is the case because you do certainly get changes in the energy field when crop circles are put down. <coughs> so how and why do crop circles appear? Okay, so that's the big question really, isn't it, that everyone wants to know. So, what's your gut <coughs> feeling about these pictures, about these crop circles? Very clever. Perfect, awesome. Perfect, awesome. <laughs> clever. <coughs> I agree that there's there's sacred geometry in it. A lot of sacred so there's geometry. messages there, aren't there's there? A, there's a message. There's communication. Yeah. Okay. Looks far too complex to be a hoax. Okay. Well, would it alter your opinion? Would it alter your feeling about these crop circles if I told you those are all man-made? No. <laughs> A bit of disappointment. <laughs> you know, the, awesome. Yeah, well, absolutely. absolutely. Exactly. But, well, you know, the thing is, you need to go with your gut reaction. If your gut reaction is, that is beautiful, that makes me want to cry, or that makes me feel something, then that's what it does to you, regardless of who created it. Mm. Now, it seems to be an acceptance that if they were created by aliens, <coughs> They're, they're somehow more amazing mm. than if it was created by a person. Yeah. Those are created by people. Okay? I, don't know the, you I don't know the names, but there are some incredible artists out there who have created these. But this is what leading us now onto the th third link in the chain, the human connection. Okay? So this is what I'm, I'm breaking one of the the sacred rules of crop circle research here, which um, this is what crop circle researchers will tell you, whatever you do, don't mention the M word. What's the M word? Man-made. In crop circle research, you cannot mention man-made crop circles. Uh, you go to any major conference on crop circles, they will not talk about it. If they do talk about it, they will talk about it in derogatory terms. It's not something they want to encourage because they think as soon as you mention the N-word, people lose interest. They stop coming to conferences, they stop buying the t-shirts, they stop coming over here on guided tours. Industry suffers. However, it's not the truth. Man-made crop circles are a big part of this whole story. And I want you to keep your minds open for a moment and not switch off. <laughs> Okay, because this is where it actually gets very, very interesting. Now this, is, this, this sums up basically what I'm saying here. Now Colin Andrews came to this conclusion about 10 years ago, well, slightly more than that, and he started to talk to circle makers and look at the uh, human aspect of circle making, and his worldview changed immediately, and he suddenly realized that he'd been wrong to ignore this in the past. Now he says, until we embrace the act of human circle making, we are merely passive observers of a mysterious phenomenon. But when we welcome the input of crop ar artists into the magic, we complete the circle. We come face to face with a deeper dialogue. At that moment, we accept the power of human consciousness to create and influence reality. Now that's the key bit there that the crop circles are having an effect some way or other. They are creating energy effects, they are creating all kind of magical experiences for people when they enter a crop circle. But the key thing that people need to know is that humans have an input in that. And it's an extremely important part of it. Now, Dr. Simeon Hein also started to look at this against his initial views on this. He didn't want to do this. But a crop circle maker called Matthew Williams invited him to come along and watch them make a crop circle. And they, he took all his scientific equipment along with him to measure energy levels. He would measured crop circles before and said there are energy levels going off the scale in some crop circles. 
that can't be made by people. Because how could that happen? How could a human-made crop circle create changes in the energetic field? It's impossible. He watched them make this crop circle, started to do readings in this crop circle, and found that this crop circle, they just watched Matthew Williams and his teammate, had actually more a dramatic effect on his energy equipment than anything else he'd seen. So, we came to realize that the whole premise that we were working to was wrong and that man-made circles could generate some sort of change in the energetic field. It didn't fit with what we thought, but that means it's actually something bigger and better than what we actually thought. And that's the key thing. He's again, he embraced this and thought, yes, there's something else going on here, we need to look at this. And it involves people. So, if you look at Circle Maker's story, you don't hear their side of the story at all. But they have had some incredible experiences, and this is where you start to see the mystery unfold and make sense. So I've, I know quite a lot of Circle Makers as well now, and I've talked to them personally about their experiences. I've heard lots of stories about the weird events that go on around the creation of crop circles, and here's just some examples. Uh, time distortions. Some circle makers um, have said that when they've been making a crop circle, they seem to be running out of time, and they've asked the universe for more time. And because it's starting to get light, and they think that we can't, we've got to finish before it gets light, because we'll be seen. So they've asked the universe for more time, and then miraculously, it seems to get dark again, and then it gets light again and it gives them enough time to finish the crop circle, which is baffling, isn't it? Until you start to look at the connection with those other elements we were talking about, the spirit connection, the earth connection, all starting to work in sync and making this happen. Encounters with dark shadow entities or other entities, this is something that occurs a lot, and I personally know people that have seen this. Non-physical entities have appeared right before them, while they're making crop circles. And these are just often static beings that just stand there and seem to be just observing the process. Sometimes there even seems to be some indication they're actually taking some part in the process, but it seems to always need the human element to it. And other entities have been seen in respect to crop circles, either on the periphery of crop circles or in the, in the same field, uh, or following them out of the field, they've heard noises, all kinds of things. There's many, many stories about this. So it's not, uh, it's not, for, the light, uh, not for the faint hearted. Sightings and encounters with balls of light, we talked about them, frequently they're seen while they're making crop circles. Unexplained flashes of light, sometimes lighting up the whole field, and they're thinking that you know, there's nothing around that can cause that, and even you know, makes them visible. Bizarre synchronicities, such as two teams making this similar or the same circles on the same night. Now I've come across that. There was two teams went out one, one night on the same night, and just a, a few miles apart from each other, they both created almost identical crop circles of spirals. And one of the teams, they changed their plan spontaneously on the moment they decided to make the crop circle. And another story that uh, one circle maker told me was that they had two plans on the piece of paper. They couldn't decide which one to do. They decided to do one in one particular location. And then they, they found out the next day that that other design they had on the paper had appeared in the field next to it, just over a, over a hill. Like, and it was made by a different team who had no connection with them whatsoever. But people were involved in all of those examples. Uh, but it's, it's this connection with something else that is making it happen. It's what that something else is that's important. Weather anomalies have happened. Like shrouds of mist have come over and kept the circle makers hidden while they complete the crop circle. Uh, even on one occasion there was crop circle researchers on the hill directly over a field where they, was, they were making a circle. And they couldn't see them because all the researchers saw was a bank of fog. It's bizarre what happens. And they get these unexplained urges and compulsions to go out and make a formation. 
something, you know, they just feel compelled to do it. And then explained, and explained moments of inspiration for actually coming up with the designs. So people say, well, people wouldn't come up with that. How did you come up with that? You know. But many circuit makers will say they don't know where the ideas come from. They just come to them in a flash of inspiration. They just feel they have to do this. We have to put this on the land somewhere. For what purpose? They don't even know. But they just feel it has to be done. There was a story of one circle maker came up with a design. It actually was the flower of life design, uh, which is a standard sacred geometry design. They said, we're going to put this next to Barbary Castle on it, in this field there. On the night that they planned to make it, one of them got ill. They decided to scrap it. The next morning, they got up, noticed there was their design in exactly the location they planned to put it in, made by somebody else. How does that happen? It's bizarre synchronicities, but it's almost like there's another consciousness guiding it. So, how are we doing for time, Serena? We got, it's five five. Five. We've got ten minutes? Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I've got a short video, two minute video, that just, I'll probably go about ten minutes. So please bear with me, because it's, this is where it gets really interesting. These are some circle makers themselves talking about well, what makes them do it. You know, because some people say, yeah, okay, but people do, why would they do that? Why would you go out in the middle of the night, the freezing cold, pouring rain, things like that, and do this for no reward? Why? What's the point? So it can't be people. It is people, and they are doing it, but they're doing it for other rewards other than financial. So just have a listen to some of this. There's a very real possibility that circle makers might be responding to a call of sorts or an invitation from the unknown to go out into the fields and to create crop circles uh, is something that I believe I've experienced. We usually say a narration. This has come from years of making circles now um, and believing that we're taking part in something, you know, more than just coincidence, that we are actually picking up on messages and going out and making circles. So because of this, we've incorporated a um, a framework, a, like a spiritual framework to making the circles, which in, involves us uh, saying an invocation. Um, and this invocation is kind of, uh, it's asking for the spirits to come to the circle, um, to give it energy, to protect us whilst we make the circle, and also for the spirits to guide us, to give us the idea of what what they want put into the circle and also that the circle be for good, that people have positive experiences from it, and sometimes we ask as well if we can have our own paranormal experiences. Well, there's, there's just a huge area here we, which we don't understand, and we know we're interacting with something. We don't know how much we're being used or manipulated by this something, uh, where this something is entirely benign, I don't know. But there's definitely something in the fact that these places are magic, uh, coincidences happen more, in these areas, they're much more prevalent, much more, much stronger, uh, much more life-changing almost. Well, no, they are life-changing. They fundamentally change the way that people view things, and uh, it, this seems more than just, more than just a coincidence. It, this is uh, synchronous. This is greater. This is almost divine, and there seems to be a, a, a consciousness, a motivating consciousness behind this that seems to be driving things forward, driving us to some eventual conclusion. What that eventual conclusion is, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's that everything is interconnected. Maybe that um, we're not separate entities. Maybe on some level we're, we're, all, we're all part of the same thing, you know? And uh, well, what a wonderful message for a consciousness to maybe to put forward to us, you know? What greater message is there? Maybe it's the, the greatest lesson that we have to learn in this very troubled time. Okay, so that's just some of the circle makers in their own words there, describing their experiences, which I think puts it into a bit of perspective, that um, these aren't just guys going out there to fool the public. Um, it's, they're not, I don't call them hoaxes, because this is not what it's about. It's not, there's something bigger and deeper going on. 
Um, and we, we have to recognize their part in it if you're going to get to the bigger picture. This is the uh, thing that uh, Fox Mulder used to say, you want to believe in the extraterrestrials or the, the higher beings coming to save us, coming to change our lives, coming to make things better. These crop circles can't be made by people because we can't do that. Extraterrestrials can. I think if you have that kind of view, what does that say about your own view of the human race? Are you saying extraterrestrials are better than us? No, they're not. We have the ability to do all of this and more. Um, like Dave Patrick was saying just a moment before I came on. We can do anything. Humans can do anything. If you put your mind to it. And it's all about connecting with these other elements. So, that's what I believe. It fills me with hope. Yeah. You know, that, that exactly. mankind does have the answer to all well, our troubles, you know. And we'd be better. Circles show us what we're capable mm. of. Okay, now, just putting it together here. The magic ingredients for crop circles. Spirit energy coming from our ancient ancestors, from entities from other dimensional realms. Okay, this is clearly a, a key factor for me. Earth energy, very important. Crops are made in living crop. Made in sacred landscape, usually. On ley lines, dragon lines, and near or aligned to ancient sacred sites. And the human energy brings it all to life. Brings it into this dimension, this reality. The circle makers, the ancient ancestors are connected to that. The sacred sites are connected to that. And the researchers and enthusiasts add their little bit to it as well. But it's not just one of those things. People look for a simple answer to crop circles. They must be people, or it must be aliens, or it must be this or that. Without any one of those things, it wouldn't be what it is today. The mystery wouldn't be there. Okay? If it was just people going out there hoaxing crop circles for a laugh, it would, there would be no mystery. That would have been forgotten about a long time ago. And they would certainly not have carried on with it. They'd have got bored with that a long time ago. But they keep coming back year after year after year because they're having experiences while they're doing this. They're interacting with something. <coughs> and they want to know more about it. They know that there's something bigger going on here. And when people, circle makers, move away from crop circles, they still keep that interest in the other parts of it, the earth energy and the spirit energy. And in fact, I'm moving away from crop circles myself more now. I'm not so actively researching that area, but I'm certainly involved in that and researching the other areas, with the link between those of spirit energy and earth energy, and where we see this interaction going on with balls of light and uh, things like that in particular. So, add all these things up together, and then a new creative energy is produced, fueled by the collective consciousness of all of them. All of those things together make this subject what it is. Okay? So, the side effects of that include synchronicity, changes in the energetic field, and sightings of unusual phenomena. Okay? Only when we are all connected with these things do these things start to click into place. Let me just put that together. Has the message of the crop circles been re to reconnect humans? Reconnect us with spirit. Re reconnect us with the earth. And reconnect us with the rest of humanity. All of it's done through the collective consciousness. You know, and if we start to work with this sacred trinity of those three things there, then things start to happen. Magic starts to happen. If we reconnect this sacred tr trinity, Maybe then we can reconnect with our own brilliance. Reconnect. This was going back thousands of years. Humans made that. People say people can't make crop circles, but they made that. That complex. 
The Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the most um, incredible feats of engineering, feats of construction ever made, and still to this day, we have not solved the riddle of how it was done. But I can tell you how it was done, because those people who did it were connected. They were connected with spirit, they were connected with the earth, and they were connected with each other. Everything has to be in place for that kind of magic to happen. So, by ignoring one part of that, we are limiting ourselves. So, by bringing it all together, who knows what we can achieve. So, that's the past, but we need to make it the future. Okay, so, that's pretty much it. That's uh, my YouTube site where you can find my other videos. I've gone through this pretty fast. So if you want to see more in-depth talk on this, more in-depth details on the subjects I've talked about, uh, the one at the top right there is my latest video, uh, which was about an hour and a half long, which goes into a lot more detail on all these things. And this was the first talk I did um, about a couple of years ago now. And as you can see, 33,000 plus views on that, which um, shows a lot of interest in this kind of thing. So, even though I'm mentioning man-made crop circles and things like that, people are not losing interest because they're starting to get the bigger picture. And if you keep listening to circle researchers that tell you, don't talk about man-made, that's not important, think about all the magic and all this kind of thing that goes on around that, ignore that kind of thing, treat these circle makers as pieces of garbage as they do, then you won't get the bigger picture. You have to open your mind to all possibilities. And only by following that path of truth will you find it. Okay? And I've just kept going with that, even though I think it's, no, no, this isn't where I wanted to go, this isn't what I thought, but when you follow it through, it leads to something better. Okay, so... Hence the reason why it's been suppressed, or yeah. at least well, maybe derided. Maybe that is the case. Maybe that's why it has been suppressed, because maybe we, people don't want us to know what we are capable of. We are capable of so much more than we are <coughs> showing at the moment. Okay, that's just my website. Um, that's what I do. Outside of it, I don't get paid for any sort of research in uh, crop circles. I'm not a government agent. As some people think I am, um, but I make my living out of things like that, and um, I, I teach as well. So if you want to speak to me and ask any other questions, you're welcome to afterwards or contact me through the website. Okay, so thank you very much. Great, thanks, Rob. <laughs>